So, Path of Exile has introduced something known as the Kyrix Vault Pass. And this has nothing of real surprise to the gaming community. This is this is a battle pass. It, it's not called a battle pass, but it's a battle pass. Battle passes have existed in various forms throughout gaming history. Part of the MTX fabric oftentimes are of a certain price point of between $10 and $15 to unlock a variety of items, sometimes in-game beneficial, sometimes just microtransactions for basically just playing the game. This one is different, and this one is Path of Exile's first foyer at the Battle Pass, and I believe it is basically done poorly in about every single conceivable way possible. Now, if you do not purchase this, you may be thinking, why does it affect me if I don't buy it? It's just an MTX, why does it matter? Well, I'll explain to you why in detail. First off, let's go over what the actual Kyrix Vault Pass is. It is 30 US dollars, which is steep as fuck, and that might be different from your wherever the fuck you're from. If you're from Canada, it's like 30 geese. If you're from Italy, it's 30 pounds of cheese, whatever. What it gives you is it gives you the, the right to unlock the battle pass. It gives you the privilege of unlocking different points of progression depending on your map bonus to unlock. So depending on what your in-game atlas progression is, you will progress through this unlocking from zero to 117, a variety of rewards. 117 being a completely full atlas. The rewards are as in order. You have a Watcher's Eye microtransaction, a Dying Sun microtransaction, Aegis Aurora, Hands of the High Templar, Paradoxica, Mjolnir, Bottled Faith, and Headhunter. These microtransactions, skills, effects, different things only work for those uniques. You cannot put this on any jewel, you cannot put this on any flask, you can only put this on regular Paradoxica, not the replica Paradoxica. You can only put this on regular Headhunter, not replica Headhunter. You could only unlock this battle pass and purchase it during Arch Nemesis League. If you are in Standard, you cannot purchase it. Despite the value of this already being quite strange, the fact that these only apply to these eight specific endgame unique items, despite the fact that it's a high price point, despite the fact that the price point against normal Path of Exile tradition does not offer points or any alternative plan to lower or reduce or pay for the cost of this using in-game Path of Exile points, it still has other flaws. And before I even get into those specific flaws, let's look at the Q&A for a second. You can get the points retroactively, so if you purchase the battle pass and you've already done most of your mass objective, it will unlock as of such. They mention that they want to have unlock MTXs without having to pay. Is there a free pass? Their response is we already have the challenge system in place and you can unlock your rewards through there. When you look at the visuals and the quality of these MTXs compared to the challenge ones, you know why our challenge rewards have diminished over the course of this league. When you consider things like, for example, Ritual offering an entire hideout, or even Arch Nemesis for the 36 reward offering an entire pet almost the size of your character, if not bigger. And then you see things like Arch Nemesis having a little measly character effect here and there. Granted, there are more in between, but the quality is so much more diminished. Effectively, what the quality is from most of the character effects in Arch Nemesis League is them opening up an HTML color slider and just saying, there's your 19 reward, there's your 18 reward, there's your 20 reward, there's your 36 reward. But all these things get new in-game art. Your paradox looks new. The fact of the matter is there are certain uniques in-game, large swaths of uniques, for example, almost every, well, actually all Harbinger uniques that do not have in-game art. None of them have in-game art. Yet time and time again, we have received uniques and microtransactions for things that are just totally superfluous. Now, Path of Exiles is is no foreign uh, no foreign friend when it comes to knowing that microtransactions pricing is absolutely batshit crazy. And this is a free game, and they fund it from supporter packs and such. But the price points have gotten bananas. For example, to purchase the Transcendence Wings to make your character look like a little fancy dragonfly, it is 64 US dollars. Here, you want you want to buy Transcendence Wings? Why don't you just go buy fucking Elden Ring for six? You could you. You could get four dollars go buy yourself a slice of pizza instead you could buy an entire triple a title for the cost of fucking dragonfly wing this button comes up all the time you see it but guess what they've taken it a step further the mic the microtransaction intrusion has been limited to the shop button but it has actually expanded from there there is now a button on the top left of your atlas that says Kyrix Vault Pass. Once you click that, it shows the battle pass, tells you how much to spend, and shows you the reward video of what you're in store for. One of my favorite parts of this also is that if you open up your atlas in standard, it shows there, but then it just says you can't actually use it. Players playing in the current challenger, you can purchase power Kyrix Battle Pass, which unlocks exclusive cosmetic rewards for you as you complete the most objectives. So it's just like a, re a reminder that you're not playing League in a weird way. The problem is, and this is the biggest problem, is that these rewards have potential, and this sets the foundry for potential, to actually 
impact in-game trade. What I mean by that is for the first time ever, these microtransactions are linked to actual unique item. Not just the fact that the price of these uniques could potentially change, that I admit is probably unlikely, but what is much more likely is not the fact that the Aegis Aurora's price or Hands of the High Templar price will go up because of MTXs. What is possible is the price to unlock these things is getting all your bonus objectives. And with that comes specific unique maps that I have even not found in Solo Self Found yet. Examples are Doriani's Machinarium, the price of Dorian's Machinarium could effectively skyrocket because people want to get their 117 Atlas bonuses so they could equip their Headhunter skin. Now that is about the most 1%er problem you could possibly have in Path of Exile. But it doesn't change the fact that as of right now, they're implementing a system, a battle pass system, notoriously a, a, a really down the wrong road type thing that, has, that will, I mean, in some way, shape or form, this, I guarantee this will impact the price of, if not these specific things, the price of the unique maps to unlock the bonuses. So this is less than an hour after the announcement of the Kyrix Vault, and the price of Dorani's Machinarium has gone from 2 Exalted to almost 15 Exalted. And even if these spikes in price are just kind of a meme as a reaction to it, this just means them releasing a fucking MTX pass has deeply affected the Trade League in a way that has never happened before. This is a problem. As of right now, we have a challenge league system that has a variety of challenges. One of the challenges historically in Path of Exile was ID specific uniques. There have been times in Path history where this ID unique challenge has made the cost of things like Alpha's Hell, only a one to five cash unique, upwards of 10 to 15 exalted because of a challenge implementation. So again, their actions impact your game. And whether you like it or not, even if you do or don't buy the battle pass, things that you're doing could be affected by it. And all this is just basically all I'm saying is, is this is a slippery slope that shouldn't be happening. Granted, I play Soul Cell Fund, so I don't really give a shit ultimately. But of all the things that I like to see in Path of Exile, you know, MTX is like ignore, but a battle pass is a thing that is a very specific terminology that has really little positive tether to it when it comes to gaming history. Just a couple days ago, they had the Twitch Rivals for Battle Royale and Path of Exile. Again, in my opinion, them chasing a dead game mode like Battle Royale is a strange thing considering they've literally nullified PvP implementation in Path of Exile and negated all support for it. But that event was canceled because the, bu the game bugged out and it was one of the most embarrassing things that I've ever seen in Path history. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, there it is! Within the window of our broadcast, Twitch Rivals has made the decision to postpone today's tournament. Oh, so, of course, hey, want to thank oh. you to Sitting and watching 10,000 people, of which half of Don't Play Path, looking at Twitch Rivals as the game bugs and the event is cancelled. I don't want to see a battle pass in Path because I think it's more of the same. These things, to me, are embarrassing. It's my favorite game. When I see my favorite game embarrassing itself, it makes me feel bad. Of all the things to happen in the wake of COVID, in the wake of Path 2 being perpetually delayed, hard mode, not out, mobile, not out, why now? <laughs> Why now? Is this really what the Path of Exile game needs for all levels of play is a fucking battle pass. Just think about it.